Ebony Maw and the rest of the Black Order Red Skull and what new characters are coming to Marvel Strike Force. All of that and more coming up on your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. And if you're ready for all that, Casino, tell them what to do. Let's go catch it. <coughs> Alley flying. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. As usual, I am joined by my partner in crime, Casino. What is up, brother? What's going on, man? Ooh, there is so much going on in this game. We got a very juicy dev vlog to top, talk about. Controversial, uh, as usual, guys. Uh, Red Skull is in the game. And uh, what new characters are coming? We have our predictions. As usual, this is a very long show. And there are timestamps in the description if you want to check that out. And uh, to all of you guys uh, w listening to this on the podcast, make sure you uh, check out the video version if you want to see some of the things that we are talking about. But uh, let's get right into it, brother. Interesting thing happened right here. Uh, we had an unlock of Daredevil for changing from three stars to two stars. What do you make of all this? Are, are they just being nice with all this? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they they're... Obviously, that to me looks like a move to be nicer to new players because those are two very popular characters and they're not uh, particularly strong anymore. Like Thor is, but Thor is particularly strong surrounded by other Asgardians, which if you're a new player, uh, it'll be tough to get too many Asgardians too early. Like Hela's certainly out of reach. Um, and level, you know, level 70 is the requirements to get into that stage, right. right? So Right, right. And then Heimdall's probably not your priority one arena store farm, although you can. Uh, you know, you have to be level enough to participate in war before you can really farm Sif. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think making Daredevil easier to unlock is good for newer players to get the uh, defenders up and running earlier. And then Thor, I think, is just a popular character, and he's not crazy powerful without his team, so... Love it. I think, uh, yeah, it, it was a little bone to bone before uh, some of the madness hit uh, earlier this week. Uh, the the Reddit uh, anger that's, uh, well, that we're definitely going to talk about. Sorry, I want to just one more thing on that to be mindful of. Uh, and I don't know if this is true, but they, they tend to, for the most part, have the number of shards required to unlock the character be tied to how good the character is. And so I kind of take that as a concession that like, well, if we're going to have characters like Red Skull and Symbiote Spider-Man be 100 shard unlocks. We can't make Thor and Daredevil 100 shard unlocks because they're not at that level. Very true. Inter good point. Good point. Yes. Uh, so, but you had a very interesting week, my friend. What are you had a nice, nice interview with one of the senior developers over at Fox Next, uh, I think is the person in charge of de designing these kits, correct? Yes. I talked to the uh, senior game designer who uh, pretty much primarily handles the character kits. Cool. So, what what was your major takeaways from that interview? It was a long one, a lot of topics. What are what are some of the big uh, big ones that stood out to you from that? Um, you know, I, even knowing beforehand that this question was going to come up, uh, I haven't really wrapped my head around it. I mean, I'm like the main thing is I'm glad that people got to see. Um, I, I don't remember if we met him when we went down to the FoxX offices, but so I, I was kind of treating it like I was just meeting him because I, I don't remember if I maybe met him once before. I think he's the uh, one that introduced the AIM rework to us. He might have been. He might have been. He was. But, but even then, I think he, he so he would have been the guy just like behind a laptop, like, here, check this out. And then maybe I, I answered like two I, questions. I could and, be mistake. I could be remembering that wrong, but I think he was. Right. Um, but so anyway, my point is I, I didn't really know him. So uh, it, it was good to like get to know him and and of course he's like a really earnest uh guy and so you know my my main takeaway was like i'm i'm glad that it got to humanize the the people you know the devs who people believe are just soul-sucking demons some people not not all people of course um and and pretty much my entire comment section on that video was like oh you know what he's a totally cool guy uh which like people were like surprised by uh, and it's like, you gotta remember like how people get into this line of work. They love making video games. Yeah. Like there are some people who like making money, but at the end of the day, most of the people over there really, really like making video games, making people happy, having fun. Um, so that was like the main takeaway that, and, uh, he's really, you know, 
knowledgeable on uh, like what what type of influence the, the certain character kits are being are, are going to have. Like uh, you know, just uh, I we had a, a theorized a little bit during some of the tier list streams. Like oh, maybe the person making these kits is, isn't all there uh, or doesn't <laughs> think about certain things. And I don't know if if these were lessons that were learned the hard way as a result of like watching our TLS streams to be more mindful. But the fact that, you know, uh, he was able to say like, Oh, we, we've been taking into uh, account ever since the Wakandans, like not to make new teams require too many T4s. We've been taking into account not to make uh, mode specific stuff, like so overwhelmingly powerful that the team has no identity outside of that stuff like that. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, there, you know, there wasn't any one major thing. Like my, my favorite moment was, uh, I, I knew I liked the style of these character kits. They're very like classic RPG. Yeah. And, uh, so I found out that he used to play my favorite game uh, of all time, Star Wars Galaxies. So that was oh, cool. sweet, sweet. So yeah. Yeah. So we're in good hands. All right. So the link for that video, that full video, if you guys want to check that out, will be down below as well as uh, some other of your links. But that was not the only big thing that happened to you this week. Uh, you got your you got all your characters geared up to gear 14 and finally got to enter Dark Dimension 3. And I saw you playing some of that. That looks so hard. My goodness. Yeah. Uh Oh, you saw today, right? I saw so. today. My goodness, that was that was insane. I, I think uh, you were, there was like forty-two en enemies remaining, and each one of them were very, very hard. So. Oh, you want to? You want something that'll really blow your mind? Uh, that team I was using, four of the five characters are six red star. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Looks yeah. so fun. Well, <laughs> well, so so we'll get to that. So uh, so while I would say like getting to interview a developer. Uh, especially one who does the character kits that was like uh, a very high point for me in terms of like how far you know i've come as a content creator on the flip side though the same week you think like oh and dark dimension 3 that's got to be another big plus for you dark dimension 3 has been one of the more painful and embarrassing experiences <laughs> not not because of how much the stages are kicking my ass but because i really tried to do something different and i like uh, i I try to always obviously give the best advice I can in the game. And this oh. is an instance where I, I really can't like stand behind what I said. I, I basically had to retract most of the advice I've been giving on Dark Dimension 3. All so right. that's not not been super fun. Shield, for Shield Trooper, anything involving Shield Trooper? Uh, Well, so Shield Trooper was listed there specifically because he's a good value in terms of mini uniques and that he needs none. Yeah. So he's still a good value for getting in as quickly as possible, but uh, he is. I mean, I, no, I I haven't changed my opinion too much on him. Like okay. I, I knew he wasn't gonna do much, and he's not doing much. <laughs> uh, but it was about. But you got in. But you got in, right? right? Right. I got in. Some some people have said they wouldn't invest in him because even just the normal superior catalysts that he's. Uh, using other characters could be using so um i wouldn't have been able to start yet but i i now just need some regular catalysts to have hella gear tier 14. so there's that again i i i don't regret bringing him in but the the bigger thing is uh once you're done with dark dimension 3 which is usually quite a bit after you've started you get enough orange gear to take whoever you want to gear tier 14. Uh -huh. so people were, have basically been advising like in the meantime, take the best characters up to gear tier 14, just so you have the strongest characters gear tier 14. And Shield Trooper is not one of the strongest characters. Okay. You could probably find a better candidate for gear tier 14. But again, I don't recommend, I don't, uh, I don't mind it. Like I, I don't regret it really. Um, yeah, he, he's been, he's been doing his job and he made the Blitz team that he's on stellar. Okay. And he made the war defense that he's on uh, much more frequently underestimated because uh -huh. they don't anticipate how much damage just trooper is doing mm -hmm. so yeah i don't regret it but uh yes, this is know. this is what i'm interested in what what are what are some of the things that you right. did take back because yeah okay that, yes. that was a, that was a big tease yes right there. yes no i'll be very sure. curious so uh i assumed and it's kind of my own fault so other people were doing dark dimension three and i could have 
paid more attention to their footage and really just looked at what the damage numbers actually were. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, people were taking uh, kind of hodgepodge teams that weren't that survivable. Mm -hmm. And then they were saying that they, they're like, oh, just your characters will get one shot. It doesn't matter who you take. So bring in people who will do a bunch of damage before they go down. And rather than verifying that, I was like, guys, I've played Dark Dimension 1. I've played Dark Dimension 2. It's all about survivability. So that's what we're going to do. So I intentionally prioritized really high red star, really high survivability characters. Oh. So I brought in my six red star shield medic, my six red star Shuri, my six red star Mr. Sinister. And I was like, you're going to see my characters. They're such high red star. They're not going to get one shot. And they're going to all be able to constantly heal each other. And my team's going to outlast Dark Dimension where no other teams are going to. And uh, no, they're just instantly getting erased and they're doing even less damage. I'm like, Shuri basicing before it's all over. <laughs> so sustain, not the way. Uh, and also I'd, I'd been saying, so my, I, I didn't give Phoenix enough credit because I was under the assumption that there would be teams that could go all the way from the start to the end of all the nodes. Mm -hmm. So the idea that Phoenix was going to force you to pay for a revive between nodes. I was like, all right, well, Phoenix can't be the optimal, optimal choice because she's going to kill herself. Um, and you want a team that can just keep going. That's not an option at all. Uh, you're going to revive over and over and over on every node. And mm. therefore, having Phoenix go to Dark Phoenix and do a bunch of percentage health before she goes down each time. Literally, at the node I'm currently on, Phoenix alone is doing about the same as all five characters. All right, well so. that that makes me feel good about my choices because right now I have two characters, Phoenix and Ultron that are ready. Everybody else is still waiting on their gear. So um, yeah, that, that that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm only at two, I don't even, I'm not even entered, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been issuing a, a fair amount of apologies this week. Uh, and, and hearing the phrase, I told you so quite a bit. I know if I get to, if I get to say, I told you so to people when I'm right, I'm not going to take it away from them. But yeah, um, so, you know, I, I, I certainly didn't take the worst team. And I, I started with five global characters, so I'll be able to get all the way to the 50% point. And I already have Black Bolt, so technically I can start on the Cosmic section as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, really brutal. Uh, Phoenix went from like a, one of the strong choices to an absolute must-have. Minerva, her stock probably went way, way, way up. Um, but yeah, just uh, characters that are basically the best teams for it uh, in terms of how fast you can clear it. Not necessarily how fast you can get the characters ready, but the teams that clear it the most efficiently, which is still not efficient at all, are like Ultima 7 teams. Hell is great. Scientist Supreme is great. Minerva is great. Ultron's pretty good. Uh, Yo-Yo's great. Black Bolt's great. Phoenix is great. Awesome. So. Cool. Ultimate cool. seven teams. Very close. Very. I'm like one mini unique away from Black Bolt as well. So I'm glad nice. uh, characters that I'm um, in there. So, uh, cool, cool. Well, we we also had some uh, blitzing going on this weekend. Uh, not a not a fake blitz, but a new character blitz. Kind of missed uh, flexing those blitz muscles, as as you used to always say. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Blob. What are your thoughts on uh, the Blob blitz scores and your predictions? I think they were right around where they were, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, we pretty much nailed it. Um, uh, it was on the lower end of what we predicted, but it was within the the range of what we predicted. Um, so yeah, uh, it was like 14 mil. So it's it's interesting. Um, I guess Blob is not as popular as I I want to say the last Blitz that like really took the, the scores and went crazy with them was I think Mr. Sinister or maybe it might have been the first Yo-Yo It might have been Blitz. an Ice Guardian if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I because wasn't Sif the Blitz? I think Sif had a big score but I don't know it, it, it was a long time ago I don't I don't look back Sif? on these things. Sif scores were up there, but I think Sif actually slightly underperformed because at the time we didn't know that the Asgardians were needed for mm. a legendary unlock. Possibly, so I think Sif, possibly. I think when the when the peak was like 14 mil, I want to say Sif was around like 12 mil, which is still still way up there, but not like record breaking. I think it was the 
it might have been the first yo-yo blitz was the last time we saw like around 15 uh, you know what i think yeah i think i think yo-yo is you're correct with yo-yo uh, so, what, what do you what do you what do you think of, what do you think of the attributed to some of these lower scores there's people not playing as much uh i, I don't know it's because because our team powers have gotten a lot more so I, I think people have the potential to do more if they wanted to but just uh just um, the character itself or what what do you what do you think just uh, speculation yeah it's always um well so th there's a couple factors i mean blob uh blob himself can't be a crazy crazy popular character i know there's players who like blob but uh you know i mm -hmm. It, everyone's inside of like whoever they want but like if you'd ask me like all right list your favorite evil mutants like blob would be way 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 down on my list um and i think that there there wasn't enough hype around the new brotherhood as much as i like the new brotherhood they're like their main thing is that they're good for one war offense fight in particular and outside of that they're just above average but they're not you know like they're not the new arena meta or anything like that so i don't think there was that much crazy demand for them especially you know following characters like cyclops and symbiote spider-man that have a lot of hype behind them um and another interesting thing was the the number of players for this blitz is not not like lower than it's been in a long time but it was close to as low as it's been for a bit uh normally there's like two hundred and fifty thousand participants in any given blitz sometimes as high as almost 300,000 uh this this one was I think like 225,000 ish mm, okay. participants which that was surprisingly low and I don't I don't think there was anything going on that would have like occupied people so maybe <coughs> excuse me oh god he has corona <laughs> uh I think there was stuff going on <laughs> there might have been I don't know but so there's a lot of uncertainty and and world and you know no sports to watch and just uh I, I think that might have had to do with i don't know maybe not maybe it had nothing to do with it people are inside more maybe that should have led them playing more but i don't know but there there was one thing in particular that happened for this blitz that has not happened in a long time and that is that i missed top 2000 on a new character blitz <gasps> and it's what uh, is that what happened i for <laughs> no reason at all right i've been doing this for like <laughs> over two years now for no reason at all on uh sunday like i woke up sunday morning and i just needed like another two mil which i had plenty of charges would have been no trouble i just i was like ah, i've got till monday so it's fine i'll i'll do what i have to do for the stream and stuff and i'll i'll worry about that tonight and then it rolled over and i was like oh <sighs> i thought i had till monday for no reason <laughs> That's a lack of sleep. It's catching up to you, yeah. dude. You, you got to get more sleep. I know. <laughs> the days are all uh, blending together, I think. Yeah. No, no, no. I was like, what the hell? That, that was my wake up call. It's like, what? How did I forget what day the blitz ends on? <laughs> It would, yeah. This is oh, not well. Good. Oh, well. There are worse things going on in the world than missing a blob blitz. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, All right. Um, if anyway. I talk 2000 the next one, I'll still get him six stars. I'll yeah. Do you got him. You got him. All right. We got a blog post on Friday. Uh, some controversy. Some uh, angry Reddit people. As if, as if they weren't angry enough from Sif going to the war store. Uh, we've speculated on a legendary, unlocking a legendary for a while, but it was finally announced the uh we got we got the black order which i think is cool i think it's cool they're finally coming to the game they were kind of teased in that uh, art book and uh, maybe maybe even teased way back when thanos was released with his uh, black order tag but uh now they're finally coming to the game which i thought was cool then as i scrolled down and read a little bit more <laughs> ebony maw you will need Black Bolt and four other Inhumans at five stars to unlock him. He is the new legendary character. Now it is coming mid-May, so they're giving us plenty of lead time. A lot of questions, though. What, what's going to happen with Black Bolt and his event? What's going to happen with the rest of these Inhumans? What are your thoughts as you initially saw this? So, I mean, there's still a couple of variables that we don't have, but... Uh... I, I had the opposite reaction from most people, so already prepare for the avalanche of, uh, of course, casinos, okay, blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> let me start from the top by saying, uh, I don't like any, the idea of paywalling any characters from anything ever. Like I wish characters just weren't paywall. Mm -hmm. um, 
That said, of <laughs> hero collector RPG type games, which this is, uh, I don't think I've ever seen one that didn't have like legendary type characters and paywalled characters. And this I'm sure will be a controversial statement as well. But if you don't believe me, you're welcome to go verify it. Um, believe it or not, Fox Next is a lot more generous with their legendary type characters than most other games of this type. If you've ever played like a, a Chinese run or a Korean run gacha game or even a Japanese run gacha game, like they, they will just regularly make their legendary characters like thousands of dollars. Even uh, Galaxy of Heroes, uh, a mobile gamer was telling me about one where like $800 was like the least you could spend to get a new legendary on like three days notice, like crazy stuff. Now, people will always go from there to like, just because other people do it worse doesn't make it okay. So again, let me be really clear. Like, I don't like this aspect of the game. That said though, uh, people acting like this is the end of the world and it's the most unreasonable thing. Again, like anyone who comes over from majority of other gacha games, I've seen people literally throw around the phrase like, oh, if you guys had played the game I came from, Fox Next are basically like a charity. Now, like, I, again, I'm not saying that Fox Next are a charity. Of course they're not. Of course, legendary events are designed to make money. Um, but I don't think it's the most unreasonable thing. And spe the specific reason I'm saying that for Ebony Maw is uh, I did have a big issue with Black Bolt. And my issue with Black Bolt was every legendary they've ever done previously, a small handful, when I say small handful, I mean like less than 100 players. For all I know, it was like six players. I just know that I know some. But some free-to-play players were able to get every previous legendary. And when Black Bolt came out, zero free-to-play players got Black Bolt. And that pissed me off quite a bit because uh, they'd never done that before. And in my opinion, some free-to-play players should be able to get every new legendary, hands Wait, down. are you allowed to say that you're pissed off at Fox Next? I think that, so. Is that, okay. Well, so here's the thing. People, I don't want you to get in trouble here. Well, here's the thing. The people who are, are already commenting that I'm a Fox Next chill <laughs> and that you shouldn't even have me on the show or they can't watch, <laughs> they're already commenting. They stopped listening to me like 12 cents ago. Uh, they're already frothing at the mouth. It's it's fine. But yeah, so I, I was very pissed at Fox Next for what they did with the Black Bolt release. And, uh, and I made a video about it basically saying like, this is BS. You can't make a legendary that zero of your free-to-play players get on the first pass. Like, I, I hope you don't stick to this going forward. And there's still some uncertainty about Ebony Maw uh, in that we don't know how Karnak, Crystal, and Yo-Yo are going to be made available. But assuming that they make Karnak, Crystal, and or Yo-Yo available, as available as they've done with the Asgardians for the second pass, as ahead of time, like at least a month ahead of time, then a handful of free-to-play players should be able to get Ebony Maw on the first pass. And the reason I say that is I know a handful of free-to-play players getting Black Bolt on the second pass. Yeah. Very, very, very few of them, but <clears throat> some of them. So... We'll need two. If, we'll need two because I think I think there are right. some people that are forgetting Miss Marvel there. So right. we'll need two Correct. of those three farmable for Correct. some free to play players to get Ebony Maw. Correct. So as long as Fox X doesn't pull something really shady with uh, Crystal, two of the three from Crystal, Yo Yo, and Karnak, then a handful of free to play players should be able to get Ebony Maw on the first pass. And I, while again, I don't love that, and I'm not like, yeah, take that free to play players. Like, it, it's not that, but. I, I'll find it acceptable, especially given the type of game. Uh, I'll find it reasonable enough. Um, and I think some people forget, like, not every player is supposed to get a legendary character on the first pass. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so, you know, we don't know for sure. Uh, I can say I will be loudly objecting to the idea that, uh, like, if, if they try to do something that makes Yo-Yo, Crystal, and or Karnak too rare, and it screws those free-to-play players out of getting Ebony Maw, I will be, you know, opposing that as loudly as I can. But uh, I'm not as mad as people want me to be, which is every person pretty much not getting Ebony Maw wants me to be furious on their behalf that they're not getting it. So I'm not that mad, unfortunately. But yeah, keep I'm, an eye on it. 
I've, I've, I've had my emotions range from all the way, this is horrible, like, what are you complaining about? This is a game, and I've kind of settled kind of in the middle right now, like, all right, this isn't the best, this isn't the worst, it, it kind of is what it is. But we also got some news before this, before all the angers set in, I, I thought this was pretty exciting. Thanos is coming, the rest of the Black Order, and he is going to have his Infinity Gauntlet. Now, not really clear what's going to happen, uh, because it says here that he will become empowered when he has four other black order members he has a new set of powerful abilities so let's 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 speculate uh, I, I know you love speculating on different things what do you think this is going to do to his kit what do you think uh, the infinity thanos is going to be uh, is it just going to be an upgraded version of the current thanos maybe more energy distributed or a totally different kit totally different character when he has these characters around um uh i i I mean it sounds well when they say empowered it sounds like he'll do what he already did and more yeah uh i mean the the word here is which unlocks a new set of powerful abilities so this leads me to believe possibly a brand new kit for thanos in the black order but maybe not i don't know (laughs) Well, I'm, I'm thinking, and again, it could go, like, it, it absolutely could be a brand new kit, but I'm thinking, like, I, I forget the name of the the abilities. I think his ult might be called, like, Powerball. So if this was, like, Powerball enhanced, that would be a new ability. Because okay. uh, it yeah, wouldn't yeah, be the same. Yeah, I guess technically, maybe it, technically like it would, yeah. And and Powerball enhanced would do something different. So maybe something like that. But, but so actually, you, <laughs> for once, when there was an opportunity to talk about potential outrage, you were like, let's have some fun. Let's speculate. I'm actually more upset about this. Okay. Uh, go I on, really go on. Like... Maybe, maybe I was missing something. What, what, what is, uh, what well, is upsetting you about this? Actually, awkward because I, I try not to be the one to like. Let me tell you guys why you're let's, not let's, having fun. Let's flip rolls but, uh, here. Let's flip it around. <laughs> I guess so. All right, defend. Um, <laughs> something new today, guys. <laughs> but no, I. So this, this, this bugs me quite a bit. So. The way this reads, and there's still, there's still like the outside possibility that this was just worded kind of squirrely, which is not unheard of for Fox next. But the way it reads is you don't get Uber Infinity Gauntlet Thanos unless you for sure have all four other members of the Black Order. And that's, if you don't have all four other members of the Black Order, no Uber Thanos. So... Uh-huh. They also said that yeah. team is going to be well, the new I, I, dominant. To be fair, audience. I did read this part before I read the Ebony Maw part. So I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I did read the Ebony Maw part. I was like, oh, wait a minute. And right, right, right. Yeah, so. Well, well, but I, so, I still well, am no, very no, curious no, no. about what this kid is going to be. Well, so I, I still think you're missing it. So what okay. I am upset about, <laughs> they're supposed to be an arena team. And ah, this gotcha, would be. Gotcha. The, I, and I see where you're going now. Yeah. Okay. This will be the first time that the devs have just straight up said, these are the five arena characters. Not, oh, maybe I can use four of them. And no, these are the five. Well, what if I drop the no Uber Thanos? And you have to assume that you wouldn't pass on a Thanos with six infinity stones. They can't make that like that. Ah, well, you don't need, you don't need full infinity gauntlet then i was like that's obviously gonna be the game changer so this is they have if it's to be believed as red they will be shutting down all arena theory crafting mm, and arena will see. become now a I red yeah. now welcome to the red star lottery <sighs> arena this is why i have you want to, to think of these things that i did not think of but yes this is i i, I kind of glossed over that set to dominate arena part and yeah I, I i don't i like i like our mixed teams that we have in arena right now we have some phoenix some ultron and then most people have three different characters there right the, and there's some theory crafting but uh again I just just you. just literally hard coding the arena team and just making it like either you have these five or you don't and if you have these five you're winning an arena that is in my opinion super lame and i'll be one of the people that have those five but i'll still be at the mercy of like did i get luckier red stars than some other person which is still lame um not to mention that uh it, it's like there's no like every arena match is going to be just kind of brainless. It's going to be black the same order versus black order yeah. at the yeah. at the higher yeah. echelons. And but here's my favorite part of all this. So in the developer Q&A that I did, 
one of the things that got brought up, uh, I I had mentioned like some criticism that I'd seen Fox Next receive about uh, you know some some team combination that Fox Next hadn't foreseen, and I'd basically mentioned like, well, you can't expect Fox Next to know what every top arena team is going to be because they have you know however many people testing it for however much amount of time, then they turn it loose on hundreds of thousands of players, all of whom can just play as much as they want and try all sorts of crazy stuff until something accidentally works great. And I literally made the comment like, n before this devlog was out, I made the comment and I was like, besides, if you guys literally dictated like what the arena teams were gonna be, that wouldn't be fun at all. And not only did I say that to the developer, but he was like, I completely agree. So I really and then hope. Hours later, this is released, and like. like by yes. the way, I so there. I have like, and, and I'm worried about. It. I have like five percent. So this this was the hope. same dev that was going around to office saying, "Don't do any speed to the mods," right? Like yelling at everybody. So maybe he does agree, but he was overruled. So it's it's possible. It's um, possible, but and yeah, I'm, this... I'm I'm happy to to help raise some hell on this one just because it's such a lame decision. Like, it's fine. I, I, I haven't given them crap for, like, making a must-have arena character. Like, when Phoenix came out, it was like, all right, either you have Phoenix or you don't. That's going to have a lot of impact on how you do an arena. Even that, it's like, fine, that's acceptable. New characters are strong. But literally, these five or go home is... Yeah, I find incredibly lame. Mm. Um, but so I, I still have like 5% hope. Uh, and here's here's my my 5% hope. Um, it, again, it doesn't read this way, but I could see them being as like, oh, sorry, we misworded it. Which is, they say Thanos gets a full new suite of abilities when he has all four members of the Black Order. I'm hoping and praying that what they mean is each member of the Black Order modifies one of his abilities and he only has a full suite of new abilities with all four of them but that perhaps he has say three new abilities with three of the members whereby he would still be arena viable and you could rotate in a fifth of your choice something like that well, there, there is still a lot of time for them to change it. We're in March as we're recording this. At the earliest, this team is coming around in mid-May, according to this dev blog. So uh, because of what they said around, down here in, with the Ebony Maw. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they do have some time to change and listen to some feedback because, yeah, I agree. That's not very fun. I like I like different teams in Arena. I mean, it's 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 more fun that way. So... Maybe maybe a Thanos, an Ebony Maw, and Phoenix and Ultron and Black Bolt or right. Yo Yo or something. Yeah, some I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yep, and and that. and but but more importantly, like a scaling benefit of like even if it was something, and you could make it still pretty ridiculous. Like they could have gone with like Thanos gets twenty five percent health and damage for each Black Order ally. If they did something like that, like. Thanos would still just become like godlike with all four of them. But if it is to be believed to be as it's read, which is like anything less than all five of them together and you don't get Uber Thanos, is I just find that unbelievably mm -hmm. lame. And again, I'm gonna get that. I'm I'm already fine for I think six star Ebony Maw. So I'm not I'm not saying this because I'm gonna get left out of this or anything like that. I'm saying because yeah. it's it's freaking lame. That's about it. I would agree. I didn't see that before, but now that you mentioned that, I, I gotta agree with you. I gotta agree with you. So, yeah, I'm 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 with you here. I'm not on Fox next side. Here. Nope. <laughs> All right. Wait, you were supposed to defend him. I was supposed to. I'm doing a bad job of it. Right. Though. You suck at my job. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. You heard him. He said it. That's his job. I no, I was trying. I couldn't do it. I, I'm not I'm not as good as defending him as you. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Uh, now, also in this dev blog, we had notice of the Villains Chapter 7, which actually just got released right before we started recording this. But this was the first time we got notice of the actual characters coming to Villains Chapter 7. Hella, we knew about. I think people were happy. I think I was a little surprised that she's on 7-6 instead of 7-9. But the other character, Rescue. What the heck? 
What the heck? I, I, she's she's available in the Blitz Orbs, which isn't the very is is not really farmable at this point. But uh, I pro I personally was expecting a supernatural character, Elsa Bloodstone, Ghost Rider, or a longer character that has not been really strifed. So we kind of build up the Marauders team, which for me is kind of lacking. But we got rescue. What what are your thoughts on rescue being added to this uh, villain seven nine as the character, the character of the was, villains campaign? I was equally perplexed. I mean, my <laughs> my guess as to why it happened is uh, a lot of people don't buy blitz orbs, and blitz orbs are like probably the best value for what you can spend your blitz credits on because you get gold back and you get a lot of character shards compared to if you buy the individual shards. But uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of people were not farming the Blitz Orbs for rescue, and FoxX decided, well, we have to we have to supplement people's rescue somehow. Got to hype uh, up Ironheart, baby. Let's get that power armor so people will buy Ironheart. Yeah, maybe. That's, that's, I don't that's, know. That's what my tinfoil hat theory is. It's probably tied to that as well. It probably has something to do with Ironheart, but... Yeah, uh, I was really hoping for like Ghost Rider or Elsa Bloodstone. Like, yeah. the, there, there's like two teams that have yeah. kind of just been swept under the rug, like available to almost no one, and therefore a lot of people are still unsure of like what their potential is. Uh, and that's Supernatural and the Marauders. Both those yeah. teams just kind of are kind of vanishing into the ether. And like, they're when Supernatural first came out, they were among the top teams. But like they're still not farmable, and already a bunch of new teams have kind of lowered their stock, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah, weird, weird decision. Um, and and characters like Elsa and Ghost Rider are so good, even as solo characters, that it it would have been justifiable to put them at the end of the villain campaign. But yeah, I don't know. I when I heard rescue, I, I had the same reaction as you, which is like, what's going on? I don't know. They're just trying to it. sell Ironheart. That's that's the only logical thing that I could think of. Right, right but why would you hard farm rescue from villain campaign when you could hard farm Hella? Like only people, only late game enough players who can get all the way through the villain campaign even have the option to yeah. farm rescue. And like, I'm a pretty late game player, and I'm also a massive whale at this point. And I didn't I'm say their logic farming. made sense. I didn't say their logic made sense. I'm just thinking that that's that's where what they must have been thinking. Well, well, one to their credit, when <laughs> when their uh, objective is to figure out how to sell something better, that they usually don't mess up. Uh, in fact, the reason why players get so mad at them all the time is because they are constantly putting players in a position where they feel like they have to buy stuff, uh, but they don't want to or they can't. So. I don't know if I buy that. Like, oh, this was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this was a failed tactic to get us to buy stuff. Like, I don't know. They've, they've proven if nothing else, they can get people to buy stuff or or mad that they are not able to. Uh, I don't know. It, does, it doesn't it doesn't make full sense to me either. I, I hope it's just a placeholder. I hope that they eventually want to put someone else there and they're just leaving rescue there for now. All right, but uh, like I said, we did get we did get this actually in the game a little bit before we started recording. This is uh, the new villains chapters. Uh, what did you think of the difficulty on this? Um, I thought it was pretty reasonable. Uh, it's, you know, not everyone is going to be able to clear it right away. But so uh, the middle section was very, very easy. Uh, the, the middle three nodes for Mystic. Now, not everyone is going to have strong villain Mystics. And to be fair, uh, Hela played a big role in that, and not a lot of people are going to have Hela. But uh, many people found the first three nodes tougher than the second set of three nodes. Mm -hmm. And uh, people have been asking, like, should I be using AIM or Hydra or Sinister Six? Um, mainly, it sounded like people were using AIM, and I think of those three, currently, AIM makes the most sense to bring up. And uh, the lowest reported powers that we were seeing for people who were without too much trouble three-starring the first three nodes with aim were about 180k. Um, so once you get your aim team around 180k, and it's, it's possible to three-star the nodes with slightly weaker, but right around that um, is what you should expect, uh, or at least what we heard on stream. Gotcha. Um, and again, the middle section wasn't bad. And then the, the third section where you can use any villains was also very easy. However, the last node, actually, the rescue node is actually... Uh, a, a, a bit tougher than expected. I uh, I took a team in goofing around that I thought um, should have no trouble. Like even if it, it didn't three star, it, like it should have easily been able to clear it. Yeah. And I actually wiped. Um, now it literally came down to a uh, a one v one between my Carnage and a Yo Yo, 
and Yo-Yo just kept getting evade and dodging everything until she won. But even uh, my grossly overpowered goofing around team got totally wiped on that last note. So oh. it was a fun bit of a challenge, but it's I not, wasn't it's playing not too around. Bad. I took in like Ultron, Hella. Oh. I, I took in like my best team in the beginning, and uh, I wasn't oh, fooling around with Carnage and these characters. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so. You probably didn't, uh, uh, didn't have too much trouble. Nah, I just I wanted to clear it. I knew we were talking about it tonight. I was like, I got to get through this very quickly. So that that is what I ended up doing. Well, I, I had enough energy. So it's like, if I wipe, I'll just take in a proper team if I have to. But I didn't think I would. Like, I used that same goof around team for the previous nodes, and they just yeah. stomped them. Mm. So I was kind of off boat, and I was like, whoa, did I, did I just die? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, cool. Well, we got uh, we got a new character this uh this past week we got red skull finally added to the game through offers uh theory crafting he was very very strong on war defense i know you've got a chance to use him uh may probably in one war at least uh how how has he been for you as a blitz character how has he been for you on war defense um so for blitz uh so today i i got him to five gold Ooh. star uh <laughs> yesterday Jeez. Yep. Um, well, I, I, I got, uh, uh, I think, either a 60 or an 80 drop from his initial orbs. But uh, Damn, we did a Whale God. Wars live on stream. I pulled a six red star. Ooh, red nice, nice. So so I had to take him to five gold, five red today. But uh, So today I got a, a better uh, impression of him in Blitz. So basically, they're mostly reliable in Blitz. He doesn't get the damage immunity if it's not war defense. Mm -hmm. But he still will revive any of the Hydra minions. So... They don't like get speed up on spawn or anything. So in a blitz match, uh, when Red Skull dies, the whole operation shuts down. And there aren't crazy tools for keeping Red Skull alive. Like they don't like give out defense ups or anything. The the Hydra Armored Guard isn't like this tank that can just taunt and taunt and taunt or has yeah. so much resistance that you can't break the taunt or anything. Like, that. like there's really not a lot keeping Red Skull safe. What's keeping Red Skull safe is anyone else they hit is a non-issue. Mm. So it's it's a bit uh, it's a bit risky basically like you're you're never totally comfortable that you're gonna win with them most of the time the enemies will just you know focus down one or two of the minions and Red Skull will just pop them right back up and they do good damage and so you just kind of win but most of the 8.3 teams in Blitz might just decide like you know what I don't like this red ugly bastard and then they kill him and then you're just basically standing there yeah. like well uh, we tried. We'll get them next time. And then it's, yeah. So they're mostly reliable in Blitz, but uh, I I would say that they're less reliable. Like, you know, my benchmark for a sure to win Blitz team is like they should win 90% of the time. And statistically, 20% of the time, they're going to go for Red Skull. So I can't call them sure to win. Mm. I can say 80% of the time it's an easy win. But uh, yeah, like 20% of the time you're going to lose and there's not much you can do about it. Um, mm. Interesting. I, I've run into that same problem. My aim, I'm, I mean, not my aim, my Hydra team is sub 100k, so I wasn't sure if that carried over uh, to higher levels, and it, it sounds like it does. So, yeah, it's yeah, just it. Like so mine, it doesn't sound like a fully auto team. I, I like fully auto teams. Well, I, I think you still can actually put them on auto, uh, just because, again, it's it, like it's not really what you do. Uh, it's just if the enemy chooses to attack Red Skull, like you don't really have a say in it. Oh, well, so you're gonna have to watch that battle though, right? And make sure they don't kill Red Skull. There's not much you can do about it. You're gonna taunt if you put on auto. Your Hydra Armored Guard's gonna taunt. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say you you gotta watch that battle. There's some teams X Men. I put on auto and I walk away. Yeah. This yeah, they're, team, they're I think not. you gotta watch it. Make sure that Red Skull stays alive. You gotta you could put on auto, but you're you're gonna have to watch it. Make sure that he doesn't die. So. You, you, yeah, you could put on auto, and you might have to quit out one in five times. Yeah. Yeah, got it, got it. But but war defense, different story. All right, what is what was your results in war defense? Well, so I don't like that question because uh, mine it's got... It's only one war, right? I, I know it's only one no, well, war. Well, no, no, so. that's that's not why I don't like the question. I don't like oh. the question because mine got instantly annihilated by an Inhumans team. <laughs> How, but, uh, what was it? Was it a punch down, punch up? What, uh, uh, what, what were you looking at there? I'm happy to say they punched down. They didn't need to, but they did. Okay. Um, but it, I mean, just the, the Inhumans are just going to stomp them. Like, there's no. Uh, it's not crazy. The Inhumans just crush them because their their whole thing is you can't damage Red Skull until you take some of the minions out. And when you're busy taking the minions out, Red Skull just pops them back up. With the Inhumans, it's not that like 
offense or defense wise, they're a threat to the Inhumans. It's to any other team. They just keep coming back to life and they wear you down. Yeah. But with the Inhumans, Black Bolt just waits till they get below, you know, as soon as they get to red health, he hits them. Half of them are villain tech, so his passive just annihilates them. Mm. And then Red Skull can't bring him back. Well, that is that so is Black a hard Bolt counter to them, and you've yeah. wasted it in humans team, so I wouldn't say it's a full fail. I had I think mine no, was no, like no. 76k. Well, and they they got punched down by a Fantastic Four by about a hundred K. So I think that I think that's a win. I think that's a win, right? Um yeah, if, if if they had to use a giant Fantastic Four for him, that's yeah. not bad. But so the the other reason I was saying I hate that question is because one of my alliance mates, uh, the reason they knew to use the Inhumans against uh, mine is because this was happening live on stream and we were making fun of them a little bit for what they did to my alliance mates. Oh, team, explain. Which explain. they did not. What happened? <laughs> they did not try the Inhumans first. Uh, oh, they tried... Doing? several things uh first they got a Cree team annihilated then they got a defender team annihilated uh i forget who their third attack was but there's there's like i want to say it was fantastic four but it could have been a different team but they they brought in a third team that got annihilated well sorry one of them was a combat cancel two of them uh just got molested one of them was a combat cancel by the end of the third attack only hydra armored guard was in red health everyone else was basically full uh and but by that point we so that this was one of the pants of hulk alliances and we just kind of assumed they knew to use inhumans so we were already at that point on stream like why are they not using inhumans what are they doing <laughs> right well well they so literally they some of them were there uh watching their their defenses in action on the stream um but i felt bad like you know I wasn't trying to keep it a secret. Everyone in chat's like, oh my God, how do you beat a Hydra team? And I'm like, I didn't mind. It's like, people should know what the counters are. I, I think mean, we so. Talked, we talked about this three weeks ago. It's Black Bolt's like the, the counter to Red Skulls. <laughs> I know. I, so I told literally one of our opponents just happened to be in my stream chat. And I, I told him, I was like, what are you guys doing? Inhumans. And then they took in Inhumans, got lucky. My my alliance mate, they brought in a 100K punch down in humans, mm -hmm. which totally unnecessary. Uh, so, you know, I still consider that a win, uh, three defenses yeah. and then a, a hundred K over the top in humans, um, was great. But, uh, yeah. So then they inhuman stiz and smash them and in humans mine and smash them. Uh -huh. Um, so we're still on the, on the lookout for a non inhumans counter to the team. Um, but yeah, mine, mine then was four gold, no red. The next time anyone encounters my red skull, he will be at a minimum five gold, five red, and he will be invulnerable. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the one hand, I'm optimistic to see how he performs, but on the other hand, like probably just gonna get Inhumans insta smashed again. So possibly, possibly, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next week's news video. I'm, I'm sure you'll uh, come up with a counter by then, or someone on your stream will have I'm a try, counter yeah. by then. So, I'm, 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 I have a lot of faith in you, my brother. I appreciate it. Don't put too much pressure. I don't, we don't know that there is one, but uh, if there is, we'll try to find it. Yep. yep. Well, it, it will be. We will talk about it definitely on a new show next week. All right. And quick notes here. We have a Hydra minion blitz coming out. Uh, this is a thing to vote for on the Facebook page. Is this something? Uh, are, are, are all of your Hydra minions at seven star already? Uh, I think I got the last of my Hydra minions to seven star uh just a little bit ago okay. um so yeah but but they're not strong uh the last week or two i've been trying to bring them up and uh most of them are now like level 65 gear tier 10 mm. which uh like that's not bad I, i'm sure there's gonna be people in the comments like oh he thinks that's weak my strongest team is there whatever but they're my weakest team so it's not like mm -hmm. uh no i'm great all my hydra huge no right. they're star they're stars them. you got them all right uh, personally, I'm voting yeah. for Sniper. We will see what happens with the win. We also uh, got some news about... Oh, we got not news. We talked about this last week. Uh, the Four Leaf Blitz. Uh, what do you think of this orb that is in uh, for this Four Leaf Blitz? Not this thing. Let's go take <laughs> out these characters in uh, the Four Leaf Blitz orb. The Clover Orb is what it's called. Uh, we got. The, we, I thought we got some good characters here. There's a Hela in there. We got a Karnak. 
Uh, Namor, not very easy to farm either. I guess he is kind of now in the raid store, yeah. but uh, good character. Science of the Supreme is in there. If you are a newer player, you don't have her in there. Mortal is pretty good, Vision. although he's in the <laughs> arena store. So what, what do you Vision. think of this orb? It's not bad. Vision's all the way at the end of Mystic Campaign too, which most people- Ah, uh, I forgot about him. Yeah, hard as a farm oh. for newer players. So yeah. Yep. So yeah, no, they're, they're not bad. Um, and even Killmonger's not a bad character. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not a bad orb, but I mean, the, the hell is the top prize there for sure. But uh, I yeah, also like was, the gold. This this was some, uh, the gold is nice. I agree. I agree. Uh, but this, my, my, my next question was, this is like they're doing special for St. Patrick's Day. Do you, would you want to see them do more blitzes like this with these, with some pretty good characters in a orb with some gold as well? Or just, uh, or is, do you think this is just a one-time thing for special events? Um, oh, I think part of what makes this feel special is that it's happening during a special event. So, you know, like because of the gold, I say, yeah, they should do this all the time uh, just because we'd all get a lot more gold. But, uh, you know, that's like part of what makes this feel special and fun is that we're getting extra stuff that we don't normally get. Mm. So, yeah, and, and I don't mind it like being a singular character because like like this way, you know, I don't have a maxed out Hela, for example. So. I, I'm more obligated to do this blitz. And so if it was always an orb and there were always good characters in there, I'd have to put in a decent amount of effort for every blitz. Uh, whereas, you know, currently, like, we just might, I just might get an off blitz. And while there's always those people that complain, like, oh, great, a Hawkeye blitz. Thanks, Fox Next, for the Hawkeye blitz, said no one ever. But it's like, I, I actually do enjoy an off blitz. Where I'm like, I'm going to have to go crazy hard for Blob, you know, right after this. So. I don't mind taking it easy. What I really like about this blitz is just the top. The top ranking is one to two percent. Yeah, it doesn't go beyond that. Those those prediction scores were pretty low compared to uh, some of the other blitzes during the week. So I I, I that I, I enjoy that as well. Yep, and the, well, so the reason for that is, uh, and we looked at this math. Uh, well, I did just because someone asked me a question about the predictions, and I had to look it up. Uh, top one to two percent. The bottom of that is usually like around rank 5,000, whereas top 2,000 is top 2,000. Mm. So when you expand it another 3,000 players, like that, that you know, floor for how many points people are willing to put up goes down quite a bit. Yeah. So that said, it is a three-day blitz, so it's possible that we undershot this one. I will say our our confidence in these particular predictions are, are obviously lower than usual because they don't normally do three-day blitzes like this um so you know th this is one time where i'm like i really hope the predictions dictate the scores on this one uh but it's you know i don't want to put people into a panic but it's it's possible they'll be a good bit higher than we've predicted we're, we're kind of hoping not and with blob coming back around we're expecting not but yeah we're, we're yeah. less sure on these because how you know how can we be super sure exactly. yeah. give it our best bet we will see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, and one thing that we were talking about last week that they did mention in the blog post, one year anniversary coming up. Uh, I asked you this last week, uh, you know, we were thinking maybe nothing, maybe some offers, but uh, they have a lot of fun events and giveaways, which I think is more than they did last year, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, yeah, so I asked you this last week. I'm going to ask you the same exact question. What do you think uh, now that we know that uh, they are aware of their anniversary and uh, do have something planned? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, clearly they have something planned. Uh, but the and they did something last year. It's not like they missed their anniversary last year. The issue was it was very underwhelming and very not memorable. Exactly. And I don't I don't remember it at all. So whatever it was, I don't remember. I I there's one thing I remember about it, and it was uh, it was that whatever they had some orb, and it wasn't a good orb. The one thing I remember about it was Hulk was in the orb, and it was it was at the it was at a point where I was. It was only like a few months after the, the snowball orbs, which also had Hulk in the orb. Mm. And I remember being like close to uh, my seven star gold star Hulk at that point. And like that being the only thing I cared about in otherwise terrible orbs. Mm. But uh, but yeah, just it, like I, I, I'm pretty sure and I could even be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure there were some underwhelming orbs and like a little bit of extra stuff. But uh, as per usual, they, they put the classic Fox next spin on it where... 
they focused more on the anniversary offers. And I remember those not being particularly good either. Um, not that like I care, like I hope that I hope stays the same. I don't want crazy good offers because then I have to buy them and I don't want that. Well, so, the good please. thing about this, this blog post, they've mentioned no offers. I mean, obviously they're oh. going to have them, but they mentioned fun events, giveaways, and that's all that me that's mentioned. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with this thing. I, I've said, uh, I said it last week, I'll say it this week, uh, they they need to do better than they did last year. A lot of games do really fun, really cool stuff around their anniversary. Um, and it you know it makes people look forward to like, yeah, the game's still going strong. Woohoo, yeah. let's all celebrate that. Um, and yeah, when your anniversary is like, okay, here's, here's a few extra bits of gold. Now go kick rocks. Oh, it's like, you know what? Hopefully they learned the lesson from last year. Yeah, just it's just an opportunity. Like, there's no, there's no harm if they just decided to get crazy generous, and they're like, all right, we're giving everyone, literally everyone gets ten million gold and a hundred shards of any character they choose. Not that I expect them to do these things, but like if they did that, like the game wouldn't explode the following day. Yeah, their metrics wouldn't just go haywire and like, oh god, now now we have yeah. no idea what's going on. It, it'd yeah. be fine. So. Yeah. They gave you away. They well. gave away a bunch of uh, gold last July because of that screw up, and the game didn't break. So yeah, no. they they could give no. away stuff. Yeah, they could be a little generous, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it. I think an anniversary is a big milestone, especially for games. I've seen a lot of mobile games that fold inside of one year. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I, I would love to know the numbers, but uh, you know, like ninety something percent of mobile games don't see a two year anniversary. So I yeah. say celebrate it. Hope they do. Uh, the first Marvel game that I covered on this channel folded in like six, six to nine months. So I, two I, years, two years is nice. Two years is nice. Yep. I played a Star Wars game that I don't think made it a year. Uh, I think I played that same oh. game. <laughs> it is time for predictions now. Uh, I think all the rumors, or at least the ones that uh, you're willing to discuss, uh, are out in the open. Black Order. I think most people are predicting something with the Black Widow movie, whether it be maybe some changes to Black Widow herself, possibly Taskmaster, possibly, uh, I, I can't remember his name, Red Guardian, I think. Is that the name yep. of his character? Yep. Uh, and then Beast is still floating out there. So let's get let's get some predictions here. What are your predictions for some upcoming characters uh, now that the Black Order looks like they'll be released over two patches? And Ironheart, so and Ironheart as well. Right. Right, so I'll give you my predictions, but you phrase this in a way like, oh, here's the rumors you're willing to talk about. At this moment, I've not heard anything about upcoming characters okay. that that people have. At this point, it's all out there. I, I was teasing the Black Order for a few weeks here on this show. Uh, if, you, if you were reading between the lines, some people picked it up. Um, but uh, no, beyond this, uh, I know what everyone else knows, and... I, I have no idea whether or not this is true, but I have a personal theory that even Fox Next is not quite sure who's releasing when. And <laughs> you could be well, right on that one. You could be right on that one. Well, so I I genuinely believe that they had plans and rugs got pulled out from under them. So I'll explain. So they they plan their movie tie-ins and stuff like several 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 months in advance, like sometimes like six months in advance. Mm -hmm. And while they're scopely now, they used to be Fox Next. And as Fox Next, they were an offshoot of Fox Studios, who makes Fox Films. And so the movie New Mutants was a Fox film, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, so I imagine that they were going to heavily promote New Mutants, just a guess. Uh, for all I know, they weren't going to do anything for it, but they were probably going to try to do some tie-ins for that. And that movie was supposed to release, uh, you know, within the next patch or two. And it got pushed back because of the... Uh, everything going on with the coronavirus, the Chinese market was the the reason they cited, which is like all the a, a bunch of people in China are not leaving their homes; they won't go to the theater yeah, and see it. Yeah, that's extended to the U.S. now as well. Right, so. right. So with that being pushed back, for all we know, they had characters for that planned, which again I would guess that they did. And now they've had to be like, well, that's going to be in two or three or four patches. Who knows? So there's that. Um, now they did mention, as you said, they mentioned Black Order over the next two patches. So there's four Black Order characters. Uh, yeah, let, let's just predict. Uh, Ebony two Maw two. late uh, mid May, mid May, because they've said yeah. that. Ironheart next patch because they've said that. Everything else is kind of up in the air, right? Right. 
Yep. So so we're we're basically looking at two patches. Who's going to fall in the first one and who's going to fall in the second one? We don't know. But there's two patches. Uh, we've got four Black Order characters spread across that. Ironheart, we last heard, will be in the next one. But it could have. This could also be one of those instances of like, yeah, yeah, yeah Carnage is coming soon. Uh, so hopefully Ironheart's <laughs> in the next one. But Ironheart's, if they were willing to move her once, maybe they're willing to move around as needed. I don't know. Then you've got the new mutant characters, but I don't think we'll see any of them in the next couple of patches. But who knows? They yeah. For I mean, all if, the we movie, know, if the movie's not being released, it doesn't make sense as a promotional tool to have them released until right. the movie comes out. So I I, right. I, I think they, they they would be out. Right. Uh, you mentioned Beast. Uh, no idea how close to release Beast was, but we saw a portrait for him. Uh, his model his and a couple of his walking. animations were were in a data mine. His kit. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, like an yeah. overview of his kit was in there. So he's assumed to be sooner rather than later. Yeah, but so but yeah, there's a movie, but there's a movie coming out. Right. So we also don't know if the Black Widow movie is going to get delayed. That's kind of like pending the coronavirus. But unlike New Mutants, I think Black Widow being a May release is far enough away that they're hoping that by the time it releases, there won't it won't be like coronavirus causing people to not go to the theaters. Like that should be behind us. So assuming that that movie releases at, at a normal time and it doesn't get pushed back for because people won't go out for a press conference or who, know, who knows, like, I don't know how all that works, but uh, assuming it releases at a normal time, um, the I feel like Taskmaster is very, very likely. And again, I, I haven't heard uh, even rumors about the names of characters, but there's really only like, a very small handful of named characters in the Black Widow film. So Taskmaster, I would bet good money on. He's a popular character. He's awesome. He's a badass. Uh, he's, I assume he'd be a skill character, and we, we're kind of overdue for a really good skill character, I think. Um, so there's, May? May for Taskmaster? Probably. Okay. Probably. So we got Taskmaster and Ebony Maw. Yep. Red Guardian makes a lot of sense. He's pretty popular. Uh, he's basically the Russian Captain America. Okay. Um, and then there's only one or two more that even kind of makes sense. There's uh, a second Black Widow who is not Natasha Romanoff. Uh, her name is Yelenova. She's the other Black Widow. She's a pretty prominent character in the movie. I I, I have no idea if we'll see her, but it is, I, could, I could see it. Um, and then just because we, we got a second Peter Parker, we know uh, Black Widow is going to don the white suit. So there's an the outside chance that they give us a Black Widow 2.0, the Whoa, white suit. That's already suit. five characters in May. That's already five well, characters. That's, <laughs> I, I'm throwing out all the possibilities. <laughs> okay. Not that I... It, it, gun to my head, here's... If I had to predict, I would Let's say... Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, okay. Super fun. <laughs> uh, so let's go... Uh, is, is Ebony Maw next patch or patch after uh, i think that would be patch after because they said late okay. may yeah so yeah mid, i, I mid, think that would be the, okay. the second right. patch so let's go ebony maw taskmaster uh red guardian and just to add a fourth let's let's go beast those are my beast. those are my uh, guesses so the, the and patch then before that would have to would be, be the rest the, of the black order three black order and iron heart and four iron heart so four and four that's that's, sense. My, that's my best guess makes sense makes sense and then throw in someone that no one is expecting or no one asked for, just just for fun. <laughs> uh, pull a random name. Then we'll get Jubilee. Gwen Hart. Just discuss. Gwen, Gwen, uh, Spider Gwen. Oh, Gwen no, Jugger Duck. <laughs> Jugger Duck. Jugger Duck. Yes. Yes, because April's coming up too, right? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Oh, hey, well, boy, how, are... Maybe that's why they're not telling us uh, who's coming. Oh, that's the, probably it. <laughs> I, I did say, I was like, Fox next, if you love me at all, please, Howard the Duck. Actually, Howard the Duck next April 1st. Nothing Nobody would, make, would believe you if they if, if, if all you the answer. more reason why it would be amazing. <laughs> can you imagine, Ooh. too? And then, can you imagine if, the like, roster for one day, for just that one day, and then to take him out? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd be devastated. <laughs> that would be so amazing. If there was one day where Howard uh, the Duck was the best character in the game, uh, I would die happy. I uh, like everybody is just You're showing up as a seven red star character for one day for everyone. <laughs> everybody everybody for got everyone. He just he just racks all times. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, because you know, I know you got to go eat. Thank you once again for joining me for this uh, news update. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. 
Uh, I am twitch.tv slash casino, and lately I've been streaming every day between 5 and 6 p.m. on youtube.com slash casino. Sweet. So come check it out. And roster reviews. Free. You're doing roster reviews again. Yes. Well, I'm supposed to be. I keep trying every day. And right. the Dark Dimension 3 stuff, it goes long. But <laughs> by the time this airs, I will absolutely have done some on stream. It's, okay. it's my, my main okay. goal. So if you guys need a roster review, make sure you check out his YouTube streams, uh, his Twitch streams, all that stuff. Reach out to him, Discord. All the links are down below, guys. And if you like this video, we do this every week. Make sure you guys check out the podcast if you want to listen to it uh, while you're driving or if you're at home doing some other stuff because I know a lot of people are staying at home right now. So check that out. Uh, subscribe to the channel, obviously. And uh, hit that like button. Smash the notification bell. Share this with all your friends, guys at least four uh, Marvel Strike Force videos a week on this channel. And there's some other links down below that support the channel. There's some merch. Uh, there's some other games I play. There's there's some Amazon links if you want to check out some of the stuff I use, like this mic and uh, some of my other gear. So check that out. And I will see you guys next time. I'm on social media as well. Hulk fist bump, baby! Finally flying out! <laughs>